Qualcomm. They've been on a multi-year revenue diversification uh, plan. Uh, gosh, for the past year uh, plus, uh, they've talked a lot about how they've grown in the automotive market, that gigantic $50 billion backlog, uh, and also getting into the PC market where, uh, quite frankly, they have redefined uh, the segment. I don't, I don't use those words uh, loosely, but they came out with their very high performance, low battery life <coughs> um, designs. Uh, both AMD and Intel did respond with offerings of their own. But this Snapdragon Summit, really the lead here was the new mobile core, uh, the new Snap uh, Snapdragon 8 Elite, which is based on a second generation uh, Orion core, and uh, Orion 1 is inside of the uh, PC, but they made some pretty incredible modifications. And the although we didn't do any of the testing, uh, they did let people uh, test, you know, on some uh, basic uh, synthetic benchmarks. And um, for the first time in many, many years, it uh, surpasses uh, Apple on a few key benchmarks. It meets them on single threaded uh, benchmarks, but pretty much blows them away on anything that's uh, multi-threaded. Uh, the GPU and the NPU uh, aren't, aren't as clear, but with phones going on sale, uh, you can benchmark them in the next month. That was the big news there. I think the set, by the way, uh, puts them in a very good position. Uh, they already dominate a premium Android, but uh, there is a potential, particularly outside of Western countries, where they can move, potentially move a few points of market share uh, related to Apple. Uh, I'm also, you know, piqued everybody's interest is would these next generation Orion cores and design make their way into the next generation PC? Uh, the next uh, big announcement was around automotive, where we saw, imagine that, the Orion, new Orion cores going into not only the cockpit solutions, but the ADAS solutions. We had a great uh, sit down uh, with uh, Nicole, who runs that business uh, among others, but it's too early to see necessarily uh, how this does in comparison from, let's say, what NVIDIA is doing or what Intel is doing. But what I can say is, is that monster backlog they have, which is up to $50 billion is proof positive that their strategy is working. And the way that I would characterize their strategy is meeting customers where they are. If they want an integrated solution, uh, top to bottom, hardware, software, and services, they can offer that. If they only want to take bits and pieces of the solution and leverage their own software, they can do uh, that too. It is so funny, just remembering back even a few years ago before Qualcomm had even announced that it was doing ADAS. They invited me to do a ride uh, in a car that was, you know, driven by um, uh, Snapdragon uh, processors. And then here we are, I think roughly four years later, uh, with this monster backlog that, that really has three parts to it. You have the communications, right, which has been the 3G, 4G, 5G communications, uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. You have the in uh, cockpit, essentially everything you see and all the entertainment uh, services that uh, go along with that. And then finally, uh, ADAS and full uh, full self-driving. We haven't necessarily seen the uh, full self-driving uh, in a car yet, but I am sure we will as Qualcomm has put together what I, I believe is a scalable uh, solution to get in that market. <laughs> the other thing that uh, we don't necessarily think of that could come out of this group is are things like robots, and you know those companies who aren't doing their own chips, like uh, the folks over at Tesla, uh, robots, uh, two-wheel uh, devices like motorcycles, and even think uh, uh, industrial. So. Hoping to get a lot more information uh, financially from automotive, uh, PC, and the mobile market uh, coming into Qualcomm's financial analyst day, which uh, is next month.
Yeah, there was a lot uh, to, you know, unpack. This wasn't unpacked, but Qualcomm did share quite a bit. And it kind of all started off with a bit of a storytelling exercise by CEO Cristiano Oman. We had him on our show, um, and we will publish that probably in the next few days. But uh, it really started off with him talking about what AI in the future looks like, which was a bit unique because this is a company, remember a couple of years ago, it was like banging on 5G, it was banging on you know, SOC advancements, features, images, photos. I mean, and this was an all AI show. I, I don't know how much you remember the kind of like go back two or three years and just how different the content has become. You know, he was talk, talking about agents. He was talking about on device. He was talking about LLMs running locally. And that was sort of the meat and potatoes is you can sort of sense that the industry, the hardware industry is is becoming cognizant of the narrative and the impact that AI is going to have and how they're going to need to position themselves to stay differentiated. And so that was very evident. And then, of course, the company did focus on how Orion is going to become, you know, sort of platform distributed. So whether you're going from phone to PC to automotive, it is going to be building continuity. And this really aligns to that diversification story that the company has been telling over the last couple of years. You know, you and I said for a long time, too much risk in handsets, too much risk in Apple. It's really done a good job of being able to offload those concerns. Of course, there's some new risk related to its ongoing uh, dispute with ARM, and we'll hit on that a little bit later. But this uh, Orion platform that it is building and this elite sort of everything we do, there's an elite platform that's got continuity across the different, you know, device uh, subsets. I think it really shows, it goes to show that Qualcomm has created efficiency. And, and of course, they're doing so by continuing to grow, continuing to develop and being cognizant of how they're spending on R&D. And that's another area that the company's done pretty well. So this all really became evident here at the event. Uh, Pat, you know, I, I think as we spent some time there and as we know, um, there are some question marks, you know, great technology, but we are in a particular era of the market where AIPCs, how good are they doing and are they growing? Uh, our intelligence team will actually be launching some forecast data on this over the next couple of weeks. Handsets, you know, we've seen the major pullbacks in iPhone 16. And while that doesn't directly impact Qualcomm that much as their content's fading out of the Apple ecosystem, the question mark about what is driving people to buy handsets and how quickly will this AI cycle really take place is another question mark. But I think when it comes to you know automotive, and you hit this and you kind of really went into detail, is I mean, they've done just a remarkable job of winning basically all the designs across every OEM and doing so, as you said, in sort of a piece part or full system implementation. And I love that in our conversation with Nicole de Gaulle, the, the group GM of that business and, and several others within Qualcomm, he really said they're focused on business that's out there to be had today. So, you know, there's Robo Taxi Day, which is great, and that's fun. And then there's the cars that people are going to buy in the next 12, 24 months. There's the implementation of ADAS, infotainment, telematics, and Qualcomm seems to be there and the revenue is ramping really quickly. Pat, I will end on saying there is a weird missing element of 5G. <laughs> I don't know um, if this is sort of just because AI is the thing, because it's a distraction, because 5G was kind of never amounted to what was expected of it. But it is kind of fascinating that this was the all about 5G thing for about five years. And now as we enter this AI era, I, I don't think I heard it one time in three days on stage. And that was really, really interesting to me. Yeah, it certainly uh, remains to be a huge part of their their business. And even though Apple, you know, the thesis, I mean, Apple's been going away for seven years ever since uh, Apple uh, bought uh, Intel's uh, 5G assets, uh, you know, give a company in the top five valuation enough time uh, they're going to going to 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 figure that uh, out and by the way even if Qualcomm over time loses the digital part uh, good luck getting rid of the uh, of the RF part so anyways let's move forward you know Apple's about 25 uh, percent of global uh, uh, smartphones and <laughs> Qualcomm still has access to that that other 75 uh, percent 